Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a pretty long video because I'm going to discuss the minerals and vitamins that people with Crohn's disease, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis typically are lacking in. It's not limited to those that have IBD, but that's really what I'm going to focus on because I have Crohn's disease. Just a reminder, I'm not a doctor. Please speak to your doctor before taking any supplements and you know the whole spiel with that. Let's get into it. Personally, I am paleo-ish, so that means that I try to stick to the paleo diet, except I will eat cheese sometimes. With paleo, you're not supposed to have any legumes, and I love beans. I love burritos. So for a lot of these minerals and supplements that I'm going to say that we are lacking in, the majority of them I'm going to suggest foods instead of taking actual supplements. Um, but again, speak to your doctor and check in with yourself because you might not be able to eat this. If you have an autoimmune disease, more than likely you've been on prednisone, and prednisone is a pretty strong steroid. If you've been on prednisone or, or on prednisone right now, I highly recommend that you increase your calcium intake. One, the majority of Crohn's and ulcerative colitis people are not eating dairy. So right off the bat, we're not taking calcium into our body through our foods. Steroids can lead to lone, um, low bone density low bone density density essentially you have weak bones you know that's what your mom and dad told you growing up is that if you want to get big and strong you need ha you need to drink your milk um but unfortunately a lot of people with crohn's and ulcerative colitis remove dairy from their diet so we're right off the bat limiting the amount of calcium that we're consuming and if you're on a steroid it's kind of depleting your body of it so the foods i recommend one dairy i'm sorry but if not almonds chia seeds, pinto beans, chickpeas, notice I'm reading out my little thing, and then also dark leafy greens. So I mean bok choy, kale, spinach, found somewhere that dried figs could contain 300 milligrams per one cup. I don't know why you would be eating a whole cup of dried figs, but point is is that they contain a lot of calcium. The next thing that we're most likely deficient in is iron and that could be contributed to the lack of eating of red meat um, or other vegetables. The most common symptom of um, not taking in enough iron is anemia which I have had and I've kind of gotten out of it and stabilized myself and that's because I do eat red meat um, which I know maybe a lot of you don't. Iron deficiency is a pretty big deal when it comes to Crohn's and ulcerative colitis because typically if there is an ulcer or or some kind of fissure within your stomach, you might be bleeding. Iron relates to the production of red blood cells and red blood, red blood cells contribute to um, the clotting process. So essentially, if your blood is very thin, you could be bleeding very easily. Um, which is why you want to make sure that if you do have an iron deficiency, you are taking the right supplements. Please speak to your doctor before taking any iron supplements because if you are not deficient, you don't need to take anything more. Iron supplements can really damage your liver and kidneys, so please speak to your doctor before you do anything. If your doctor does recommend you take an iron supplement, my suggestion is taking um, the supplement cutting it in half and just doing a half size per day along with a stool softener because iron uh, supplements biggest symptom or side effect is constipation and it kind of just upsets your stomach as it's being processed and digested through your system. Um, if you don't want to take an iron supplement, I personally eat red meat, but there are plenty of other food sources for you to take advantage of. Fish is a very good source of iron, as well as spinach, kidney beans, um, and broccoli. So something personal about me is that I have had surgery to remove my ileum. And your ileum is important for absorbing a lot of nutrients, fluids within your body. For example, I have an issue with reabsor reabsorbing liver bile, um, but also the ileum is the direct place to absorb B12. So now that I no longer have an ileum, I need to give myself B12 injections once a month. For specifically for B12, again, speak to your doctor about this, but 
I don't think it would be a big issue if you have not had surgery to remove sections of your intestines. Okay, so vitamin D is kind of the big one of them all. No matter what autoimmune disease you have, or even if you don't have an autoimmune disease, there is a lot of research right now going into vitamin D, gut health, and the relation to your brain. There's a theory that vitamin D has a big role of gut inflammation, and that if your, your vitamin D levels are stabilized and your inflammation might be stabilized, it's also really important to people that have uh, weak bones and it's easier for your body to absorb calcium if it is sufficient in vitamin D. So I'm not a scientist, I'm not a doctor, but I have been doing a lot of research on vitamin D and I found a study in 2016 that suggests that vitamin D directly responds to the production of immune cells and essentially found that those with Crohn's disease responded much better to normal medications when they had high amounts of vitamin D within their system versus those that had a very weak uh, vitamin D level. There was also a study in 2017 of the Scandinavian Journal of the Gastroenterology that studied patients with Crohn's disease that lived in Chile. And um, their hypothesis was that because they're so close to the equator and that they have a plentiful su uh, supply of vitamin D, they might have less symptoms. And they found that there are fewer um, IBD hospitalizations compared to United States. And so there they see a correlation. I'm not saying it's a causation, I'm saying it's a correlation. And upon other studies, specifically within the UK, they're recommending taking 2,000 IUs of vitamin D per day. And there's also a lot of psychology research that goes into that of how high vitamin D levels have benefits of brain to gut relationship. So the next three vitamins I'm just going to mention, but I truly believe you should reach out to your doctor before taking anything, and that if you are deficient in any of these vitamins, more than likely your doctor has already addressed this with you. Um, these vitamins are vitamin A, K, and E. And essentially these three vitamins are pure fat soluble, and so if you are missing parts of your intestines, then you might not be able to fully absorb these vitamins. I've also found that the foods I've already mentioned throughout this video are also within um, foods that are high in vitamin A, K, and E. And so I wouldn't be that worried about it if your doctor hasn't already addressed this with you. For vitamin A, you want to eat carrots, sweet potatoes, spinach, um, and broccoli. For vitamin E, um, this is specific if you've had your ileum removed, um, is essentially just healthy oils. Um, so like sunflower seeds, almonds, peanuts, and sunflower oil. And vitamin K is essential for blood clotting and for bone strength. Um, and so for that, it's going to be the same thing of dark leafy greens like bok choy, kale, and spinach. And last but not least, one that I highly recommend you take, of course speak to your doctor, but there's also tons of research of how this is beneficial for anyone, is taking magnesium. I don't recommend you take it every single day, maybe just once a week, um, but people that have autoimmune disease in general are a bit deficient in magnesium, but it's not as crucial as the other ones I've mentioned. Specifically for those that have Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis where you have a flare and you are having massive diarrhea or you're vomiting, you are excreting all of your fluids. If you've noticed later that day or the next day you are achy, you are extremely fatigued, your joints hurt, that might be because you are magnesium deficient because of that episode that you just had, if that makes sense. So this isn't something I would recommend all the time. It's something when you are having a major flare and you are really losing um, all of your fluids. I personally recommend that after you are having a flare, you take magnesium, you drink a bottle of Gatorade, and you take a hot bath. 
So mind you, like with magnesium, I only recommend it when you're having a flare and you're having diarrhea and vomiting. Because if you're eating a lot of green vegetables, I really think that you'll be fine with your magnesium um, level. And if you're not comfortable taking a magnesium supplement, I would recommend after a flare eating a banana because it's high in magnesium and potassium. One medium sized banana will give you 30 milligrams of magnesium and 422 milligrams of potassium. And this will help with muscle, muscle cramps and electrolytes and then the Gatorade or whatever sports drink that you use uh, will also help replenish your electrolytes. So when you do recover, it's much easier for your body because you're already supplying it with the supplements and electrolytes that it needs. I hope this video was very informative and I highly believe that when you have an autoimmune disease or even not, being like peaking with your vitamin levels is so important and I truly truly feel my best when I'm taking high amounts of vitamin D um, and that I maintain my like regimen of having my B12 injections every, uh, every month. Um, my mom really pushes fish oil. She's a big fan of taking omega-3s. Um, I, I have it. I just That's not a big thing for me. And I eat cheese, so calcium isn't a big deal for me. But I did um, go dairy-free and take iron and calcium supplements when I was on prednisone. So sometimes you just have to fluctuate with what supplements you're taking based off of the current medication you're on. If you guys have any other suggestions of foods that are high in mineral and vitamins that people with Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis are typically lacking in, or maybe even fact check me, maybe there's another vitamin that I didn't include, or if you think that you have a better way of doing something or more information to provide on a specific vitamin or mineral, please leave it in the comment section down below because that's the exact thing that I want to create. That is the exact response that I would want for this video. I want to create an environment where we are all helping each other because finding information is pretty difficult and I've been to a nutritionist several times regarding Crohn's disease and it's never been that helpful that I always have to do my research on my own and figure out what's best for me and I hope that this video was somewhat helpful for whoever's watching it. Again, remember that you were never alone and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!